Hello and welcome to this video on installing Google App Engine on Microsoft Windows. Uh, this video is part of my book using Google App Engine uh, from O'Reilly and Associates and it's also part of my uh, supporting website uh, appenginelearn.com that uh, includes this video and, and many other things. So we're going to uh, download and install Google App Engine but on Windows, we have a prerequisite of Python, and in particular, Python 2.5.4. So let's go ahead to the Python website, and here is the URL, www.python.org slash download slash releases slash 2.5.4. Now, you may already have Python 2.6 installed or even Python 3.0. Uh, Google App Engine, at least at, as of this moment, is requiring 2.5, so you need to install this if you don't already have it. Now you can tell if you have it by looking in your um, in your computer and seeing if there is a folder called c colon backslash python25. So if I were to go into my my computer here and look in my C drive and I do not see a c colon backslash python25 and so it's likely not installed on my computer. So let's go ahead and install it and uh, we'll go to this download page and there are many clicks here so we'll get the right one. Um, this is a very standard Windows x86 processor and so I'm going to use this one here Python 254 MSI and so this is going to take a little while to download. I'm going to save it to my desktop and now we wait. So now our download is complete and um, we're just going to run it straight off of our desktop and this will be the Python installation. So we're going to say yes, let's go right ahead and run that. And we'll install it for all the users of course. And you'll notice it's going to put this in c colon backslash python25 backslash which is exactly the right place to put it. And we don't really need to change anything here. And so here goes our installation. Okay, so now our installation is complete. Uh, we really don't have to test it. It, it worked just peachy fine. Um, uh, let's move right on to downloading Google App Engine. And so you go to the website code.google.com slash app engine slash downloads.htm and we're going to download the Microsoft installer from Windows. And we're also going to save this, and we'll put it on our desktop, and now we wait. So now that's complete, and we're going to go ahead and run that installer. And it asks if it's we trust it. Of course we trust it. So you'll notice it found Python 2.5. Cleverly we installed that before we started. And we accept the terms of the license without re reading them. Who would want to do that? Create a desktop shortcut? Sure. We're going to take everything and add product to the user path. All these are nice things to do, so we'll say yes to that. And now we'll go ahead and install it. Now we're not going to bother running any of these, so we're just going to finish at this point. So now we've installed all the necessary software, so let's move towards writing our first application. So I'm going to go ahead and launch the Google App Engine launcher here. So this is the Google App Engine Launcher. Change its screen size a little bit. There we go. Make it a little smaller. Make it a little narrower. Okay. So there we have the App Engine Launcher. And uh, I'll close this. So now I'm going to write my first program my App Engine application. And so I'm going to use, oh, enough of that, I'm going to use Notepad++ as my editor. Uh, you do not want to use Notepad, you do not want to use Word, you do not want to use Microsoft Word, you want a uh, programming editor, an editor that sort of understands programs and doesn't add a bunch of sort of extra weird, funky, bold, and italics characters in, but just the characters that you are typing. And so Notepad++ is uh, is my particular recommendation because it's 100% free and it's 100% suitable. 
So our first uh, application, we're just going to go through the uh, Hello World application with a few changes. And so we're back at the Google website. We've done the development environment install, so now we're going to move on to Hello World. And this tells us to create two files. One is code for a Python application. So I've copied that right from the Google site and I'm going to put it into my text editor and then I'm going to do a file save as and I'm going to go to my desktop I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop called apps oops looks like I got an extra folder but we'll go into apps then I'm going to create another new folder called AE01 Trivial and then inside AE01 Trivial, I am going to save my file as index.py, just like I were writing a Python program. So here's my little index.py. I'll get rid of my extra new folder. Who needs that? And move apps down here so it looks like I want it to look. So again, here is apps and, and AE01 Trivial. And then I've got index.py in AE01 Trivial. Okay? So then I've got to create one more file. So let's go ahead back to Google and borrow the text for this file. This is the app.yaml file. And this is the definition of our application to Google App Engine. So I'll create a new file. And I will paste that contents in. And I'm going to change the app, my application name here to be AE01 Trivial. Oops. AE01 Trivial. And I'm going to make it so that it runs when it gets requests from our web browser. It's going to run the script index.py rather than hello world.py. And then I'm going to save this file, making sure I'm in the same directory, which I am. And I'm going to call this file app.yaml. App.yaml. Okay, so I'm done with this. So I've created some files. And I want to use the App Engine Launcher to start a my web application. Okay. So again, I've got apps. AE01 Trivial, and now I've got two files, an index Python file and app.yaml. So then what I do is I say file, add existing application, and then I go find that same folder on my desktop, apps, AE01 Trivial. Now I've selected the folder, not the files, but the folder, and it's going to run on port 8080. If you have more than one of these, it'll pick different ports. So now I'm going to add it. Okay? So now I've got this little web application, and it's got where I'm at, and um, AE01 Trivial. And now when I select it, I have some options. I'm going to run it to start it up. It takes a moment to start. So now it's successfully running with this little green, and I'm going to hit the Browse button so I can see my application. Now, this is going to bring up a web browser on localhost colon 8080 so that it's actually talking to the web server that's running. So here is our, our browser. Now, let me, something went wrong with our application because instead of seeing the output of our program here, let me change the size of this. Nope, I want it to be smaller. Instead of seeing the output of our program, we see a traceback. Uh-oh. So we are in the file document settings, AEO and Trivial, line 3, and it's complaining about this line of our Python program. Um, End of line, EOL, end of line, while scanning single quoted string. Oh, looks like we made a typographical error in our program. 
And look at that. There is no closing single quote. So I'll save it. I'll change that. I'll add the single quote and I'll save it. And this is one thing cool about doing this. I just saved it. And now I go into my Internet Explorer and I press refresh. And now I see Hello World. So I made a mistake. Oops. We'll fi we fixed it. Everything is good. Um, you'll notice you're not seeing this contact text slash plain because that's actually a header that's communicating to the browser that this output is actually not HTML but instead just plain text. That's why we're seeing it in a fixed format. So, so that's the application working. Let me show you how I can change it. So if I want to change this, this string to be hello Chuck and then save it and then press refresh. Oh, I'm tired of this. Don't show this message again. I don't know what that means, but I don't want to see it. So it says, hello, Chuck. If I go back and I say, hello, Jim. Save it. Hit refresh. So you can just change these files and you hit refresh. You don't have to stop and start the, start the, the, uh, the engine. Um, and if I take a look, I can also, another very useful thing to do is to watch the logs. And so these are the logs. By clicking on logs, I'm seeing the actual actions that are going on in my server. And what you're seeing is a series of GET requests going on that each time I'm hitting the refresh, I get another one of these GET requests. Matter of fact, I think I can just move this over and you can watch another... Oops, come back. Not there. Here, which I want to make smaller. So you can see it all going at the same time. There we go. Pull this down here. So let's watch log and hit a refresh. And what you're going to see is this should go up. So you can see every time I hit the refresh, it's doing another get of the slash document. Okay, and this is um, localhost 8080 slash. And so this log, as you're doing development, will be quite helpful because it's telling you that your little program is running and the output's coming, and sometimes you'll see errors in here. So we'll close the log for the moment. And I'll show you one more kind of error. And I'll have to stop and start the browser to do uh, stop and start the application engine to do this. So I'm going to make a mistake in app YAML. You already saw a mistake in the Python. One of the most common mistakes that people do when they type this in is they forget to indent this script line. And it's very picky about this. This file is kind of like the quarterback of your application. It tells if anything's wrong with this, nothing works. Okay, And so you've got to get the syntax right. And I'll show you what happens. So we'll select this and we'll press run. And it starts up, but instead of a green, we get a yellow warning sign. So let's take a look in the logs as to what it's complaining about. That's always a safe place to go. Oh, where is it? Let's scroll up a bit. There we are. Um, it is complaining about my app YAML file on line 8, column 1. And you can read a little more about what it's complaining about. It's like unknown URL handler type, as if that teaches us anything. But it doesn't matter. If you get this kind of thing where your application won't start, then you generally your problem is in app YAML. And the spacing here matters. And I, I now I'll fix it and put two spaces in. And I'll save it. And now I will come back. I will stop it. And then I will start it again. And lo and behold, this time I get a nice little green running indication. And um, if I hit refresh now, my application is there. Okay? If if I stop it, then there's nothing listening on port 80. And if I push refresh, you'll see it's spinning and spinning. Cannot display page. Okay, it's as if it's not there. Okay, so, oops, say goodbye to these things. So that pretty much is um, everything that I wanted to show you. Uh, I hope you find the Google App Engine book uh, useful, and I. Hope that you find the appenginelearn.com site to kind of walk you through some of the beginning stuff uh, useful as well. Thanks.